Well, obviously, the major news today is the fact that essentially the government of Bolivia has been overthrown by fascist forces inside the country, which I'm totally sure are not connected to the United States in any way, shape, or form. Now, this occurred on Sunday night, and what happened was Evo Morales earlier in the day announced that he was stepping down as president, even though he was democratically elected. He got the majority of the, the highest percentage of the vote and the over and the highest overall number, but this was highly contested by fascist forces inside the country. Then they started carrying out waves of violence against leftists inside the country. And Evo Morales decided that he was going to step down for what he said was to protect the country from further violence against leftists. Then several hours later, he announced that it was a coup d'etat and that the military had forced him out. Now, several hours after that, the government announced an, uh, an, a warrant for his arrest. So things are looking very, very poor for the situation in Bolivia right now. And there's going to be a great deal of chaos for s some time. There's going to be a lot of violence in the streets. There's, there's going to be a lot of killings of leftists inside the country because I sincerely doubt that they're, that the fascist forces are just going to let all of the leftists walk because even Morales stepped down. So we know that kind of retribution against daring to allow people to see a doctor is going to be coming. Now, one tiny little thing that the mainstream media seems to just be missing is the fact that it was just announced that the lithium industry, which is a very, very important natural resource in the country, lithium, those are for batteries, etc., that it was going to be nationalized. Now, you see, here's the problem. Before, it was essentially they would mine out the lithium and sell them at uh, bargain prices to Western corporations, mainly U.S. ones, but some other countries as well. Well, the decision was made to nationalize the lithium, and then it would be sold directly on the international market trying to get a better price. Then, all of a sudden, Evo Morales finds himself out of power. So let's be honest. This is essentially the same thing that goes on in Latin America all the time happening again. Another leftist government gets overthrown because they want to nationalize something. So we're looking at the same old imperialist thing that happens every time nothing changes. It's just the same thing over and over again. And this is a problem that we're going to have to continue to deal with. Now, when I initially commented this on Twitter, I said, this is what happens when you champion a social democrat as a socialist. Things like this happen. Evo Morales was not a socialist. He was a social democrat. This happens to be a, a, a very bad trend that's happening in Marxism nowadays, is to take these guys who still literally have a capitalist system and then just call them socialists. You know, like Venezuela is still a capitalist country. They didn't get rid of the capitalist class. It's still there. The same thing with Bolivia. That's the whole kind of problem. And then when you allow the capitalist class to continue to exist, they can do stuff like this. And I just, I just mentioned we should stop just championing social democrats as socialists. I'm not against the gains that... Evil morale is made. They were wonderful, great things, and I have supported them from the beginning. But I was not under any kind of friggin' illusion that everything was gonna be okay just because you have a leftist Latin American government because you keep calling it socialist. And then when I mentioned that, I could have at least two people specifically started screaming, Shut up, settler. That's like their argument is, I'm wrong. And the things that I said didn't happen because I'm white? Or what exactly was the argument being made? Essentially, I made a valid criticism. This is what happens when you allow the capitalist class to exist. To exist and you're not a socialist when you do that. And then proceed to essentially call me racist. Now, I normally wouldn't be... Ups if, if that was a liberal who said that... 
you know, whatever. Lib's going to live. Don't care. But when somebody claims to be a Marxist and does ridiculous ID poll like that, yeah, that's kind of really annoying because you're not supposed to be doing things like that. You're supposed to be doing Marxism. You know, revolutionary science, that thing that doesn't depend on someone's skin color for them to be right or wrong, that's liberal. That's the best example of liberal ID poll that there is. So that's just, I just wanted to give that to explain why I lost my temper on Twitter with these morons that were so busy trying to attack my race rather than try to figure out how things got to this point. When something like this fails, even something that's not even, not even actually a revolution, but a big, very big left-wing movement like this fails, you have to try to understand why. And this is a lesson that we have to keep learning over and over again. Stop championing social democrats as if they were socialists. If you want to respect the achievements of social democrats in these countries, great, I absolutely support that. But don't pretend them to be something that they're not, because then you leave out things like this. For everything that Venezuela is going through right now, what is the one thing Chavez did right that Bolivia did wrong? Worker militias. How many guns have been handed out to regular, everyday, working class people inside of Venezuela, organized into militias, dedicated to defending the revolution? And that was absolutely the right thing to do. And in fact, you might be able to make the argument that Bolivia might not be in this situation if, it, if they had had those militias. Maybe. The, the situation obviously is more complicated than that. But you would have something to be able to fight back with. And now all those leftists are probably going to get slaughtered by fascist forces in the country. Because they don't have any serious means to defend themselves. This is why you arm the working class. I mean... If, like, it's messed up, but I basically have to argue Marxism 101 on this. Because people are falling into the trap of not doing it. Yes, this is a terrible tragedy, what's happening to Evo Morales, and he's probably going to end up getting executed. But we should not forget that we can, that we have to learn the lessons from what's going on here. We have to learn from the mistakes that we make. And then when I point out what the mistake is, the first thing they scream is, you're white. Okay? It's nonsense. It's like they don't want to learn. They don't want to take a criticism. Believe it or not, you can actually make a mistake. It's possible for leftists to make a large mistake like this. And as much as we want to mourn the loss of what was a very leftist, a very good Bolivia, we have to realize that, that, we, that we have to learn from the mistakes that we make. And that's just the main point I wanted to make about that. I mean, still, this is the early hours of the coup against Morales. So there's still probably a lot more things that are going to be happening. I've even seen one example where the fascists are coming in to the parliament building or whatever and they're laying down a bible on top of the flag and then praying god speaking of colonizer or settler etc that kind of mentality is still there and this uh just uh, from rt just 25 minutes before i started recording this video armed protesters have broken into the venezuelan embassy in bolivia and the diplomats have to f have to flee well, they have they have fleed. So this uh, this today, this November eleventh, this uh, might be end up being Bolivia's September eleventh. And this oh, this is just so bad. This is so this is this is so bad. I mean, the thing that just keeps going over and over in my head is this is why you arm workers. This is why you give them guns. And it's it's not enough to just give workers guns. Organize them into militias. Train them to use the weapons. Look at the DPRK. Best example of worker, worker peasant firearm ownership. 
the number of DPRK citizens that are armed and trained to use those rifles outnumbers the friggin' military. And they have a huge military as it is. That's how you do that right. I mean, there's not much, really much more I can say right now because there's not too many details out. Just know that it seems very likely this is going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.